How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame. We are back with another video and today we're doing a quick turnaround here. I just got home, uh, went out with some friends, talked a bunch of football and here we are back talking about football again. Uh, we're doing game week 20. Uh, you can see my team current up on the screen. Um, pretty below par the last two weeks if I'm honest, but uh, hopefully we can look to pick it up um, this week coming up. Um, it's a quick turnaround, so uh, we had uh, Thursday and a game today as well, um, and then we also have games tomorrow and Sunday uh, immediately afterwards, and I'm pretty sure it's the same way for New Year's uh, as well, where it's quick games um, on New Year's Day and the Friday and then Saturday, Sunday again. It's really tough on the actual teams themselves, but hey, we enjoy it because it's a lot of football, so let's get right into it. So let's start off with the predictions and see how we did there so for Spurs uh, we said 2-0 over Brighton uh, I only get one point for that because I got the correct uh, uh, result rather I said the Spurs would win uh, they only won 2-1 uh, uh, same goes for Aston Villa and Norwich so we get one point each there uh, Arsenal said they win 3-1 they ended up drawing with Bournemouth a 1-1 result so we got the result wrong there so we don't get anything there I said Chelsea would win 2-1. It was 2-0 to Southampton, so a wrong result there again. Crystal Palace said 2-0. They won 2-1, which works for us. Everton 2-1. Uh, they end up winning 1-0, so we get another point there. Uh, Sheffield United said 1-0. Obviously, Watford had to go and spoil the party. Um, it was ended up being a draw, so no points there. We got the result for United. A lot bigger than what I was expecting. Um, but uh, yeah, had to take a, had to go a goal down in order to actually get that result to to work for us. Uh, the Liverpool result uh, we got wrong. We said Leicester win 2-1. Uh, Liverpool obviously won uh, four nil. And then the City result we got wrong as well. City obviously getting a red card um, very early on in the game with Ederson basically doing something that he shouldn't be uh, fouling Jota outside the box uh, on a on a breakaway. So overall we got five points. Uh, which is pretty bad. It means we got half of the, the correct teams winning and the other half wrong. Uh, but we didn't get any exact scores right. I thought I got the Spurs Brighton score right. I thought I said 2 1. I guess I didn't. Um, Aston Villa, did they end up keeping a clean sheet? They did. So that was a pretty good pick there. Which means Heaton was also a great pick. Uh, Van Arnholt, uh, he only got two points. He did not keep clean sheet. So that wasn't great there. Um, Ericsson did not play. Uh, he didn't start, but I don't believe he was involved in any of the Spurs goals, although he did change the dynamic of the game when he came on, um, so unfortunately not right there. And I believe McBurney was part of the Sheffield United goal. Uh, no, he wasn't. He was part of the disallowed goal, unfortunately, but he did look lively, so it, was, it wasn't a bad shout, so us only getting two out of the five there. So overall... Our points, uh, our, our, our guesses haven't been great. Um, uh, and sometimes that's how it goes. It's a bit tough, especially with constantly rotating fixtures. Uh, we definitely did better than last week, and it wasn't our overall lowest score. We got five, whereas the last couple of weeks we've been getting fours and threes and all kinds of complete and utter rubbish. Um, but yeah, some surprises of the week. Um, Arsenal looked way better than what they had in the last few weeks, even though they drew. Bournemouth played a lot better than what they normally do, but Arsenal did look very good, um, and they looked a lot, lot more, lot more solid. They looked like they should have probably won the game, but their attack let them down. Um, moving on to another London club, which they'll be facing this week in Chelsea, they just were all over the shop. They it's just no, no final product. Um, the play just kept breaking down repeatedly. Um, it's, it's just not, not great. It's just not great at all. Uh, Crystal Palace, uh, they did, they did quite well, uh, them conceding to West Ham was a bit, you know, unfortunate, but again, what can you expect there? Uh, Sheffield United, uh, probably should have kept a clean sheet against Watford, obviously giving away the early goal, one of their very only chances. Everton, obviously, under Ancelotti, we see that they're running up, uh, obviously a different style, uh, with the likes of Sidibe playing forward, who's actually a, uh, an out-of-position player. He is currently a 5.3 defender. He was basically playing right wing um, on the team sheet. And that's how he kind of played throughout the game. And actually ended up getting an assist uh, in the goal to Calvert-Lewin. So 
uh, quite good there. Um, so potentially a lookout for Everton. Um, if we actually just take a look at, um, let's see if we can get the, let's just look at some of Everton's fixtures here. So they have Newcastle away, which is a pretty good fixture, I would think. Um, then they have Van City away, so not great there. Brighton at home should be a pretty good fixture for them. And then West Ham away. So the next four are pretty good, obviously, um, you know, barring Man City. But apart from that, uh, they should do, uh, they should do okay. So... Um, yeah, I think it should be should be all right for them. Uh, United obviously beating Newcastle. Obviously, this isn't this is a game that we should be winning. Um, again, we we need we need these types of results. We need to go and beat Bournemouth, uh, not Bournemouth, uh, Burnley. Sorry, uh, tomorrow in the late kickoff, and we need to go and beat Arsenal. That's just what we have to do. Um, it should be games that we sh that we should be winning um, and should have no trouble beating them. But obviously, with Burnley, who they're not going to want to play football, really. Um, it's going to be quite tough uh, for us to potentially break them down. So, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be going to be tricky. And then after that, for United, obviously after Arsenal, um, you know Norwich at home should be a win. Then Liverpool away, obviously not great. Uh, Burnley at home should be a win. Um, and then uh, Wolves at home, like these home fixtures, is the ones that we should be doing doing quite well in. Um, and then Chelsea away, um, you know, so a bit, a bit of a up and down, up and down patches. There's some games that, we sh that are definitely winnable. Some games that are uh, probably going to be a bit more tricky, like the Liverpool uh, fixture. And then obviously Leicester, the 4-0 scoreline uh, was kind of basically emphasized when Soyuncu uh, like handed the ball. Um, it was 1-0 at that point, and Leicester had been pressing for the, uh, for for 10 minutes straight. Uh, Liverpool were kind of playing a bit on the back foot. Liverpool. Uh, got a bit of a break. They got a, a set piece. So on she had his ball, and then from there, it kind of just they kind of fell on its face, and Leicester um, got got pretty embarrassed, honestly, um, by the scoreline. And then lastly, obviously Ederson kind of kind of messed that one up. Uh, resulted in uh, a Wolves, uh, some might call it a masterclass, even though City were for. Uh, parts of the game were, were, were quite good even with 10 men obviously they scored the first two goals in the game um, the, the game really had everything it had it had a comeback it had penalties it had a red card it had a retake of the penalty it had all of it so it was a very action-packed uh, packed game um, and obviously the late goal from from Doherty secured it for Wolves and pretty much secured the title for Liverpool assuming no major mishaps and in, in injuries um, I want to say that they're either 12 or 15 points clear. Um, it's it's definitely a large uh, large lead to, to give up. Um, so it's just a matter of how many points they'll win by. Um, I, I would think at this at this stage, my two leads have been given up before, so you can never say never. But um, it was basically these two games that we were kind of looking at to see does injury uh, does uh, Liverpool come out of this injury free, and do they have um, are they looking good in it, and you know it, it, do they win both fixtures? And emphatically, the answer is yes. So, if we look at the team, let me just make sure it looks pretty lined up to me. I'll just move it just slightly. Um, so, yeah, Henderson getting two points as well as Lundstrom. So, wouldn't have mattered if I would have put in Ramsdale or not. They got the same amount of points. Um, wouldn't have mattered if I would have put in Dent Donker or not. I basically played the most amount of points I could on the field. Um... And I also captained the best possible player I could have in my whole team. So the max amount of points my team could have gotten this week, barring using a chip of some kind um, with the transfers that I made, uh, was 47. Um, we made the two transfers, which was Jack Grealish and Van Arnhold in. Uh, and we got rid of Mason Mount, um, as well as Rico, which actually was quite good for the two transfers that we made. Because we got six points, we got a Grealish assist, which was quite nice. Um, and then we also um, didn't have to deal with Rico obviously being suspended. And Mount didn't get anything, and he didn't start, so he ended up with uh, with one point anyway. Uh, so no clean sheets across the back line. Quite quite disappointing. They were all pretty much gone quite quickly. Um, even though Palace um, and Sheffield United managed to pull it back, and in Palace's case, ended up winning the game. Uh, Van Arho came off injured um, after, I think it was around the 67th minute, somewhere around that time. 
or it was after 60 minutes anyway, um, and he came off with a slight hamstring injury. I'm not sure if it's like a ha pulled hamstring or if it was um, if it was just cramp or whatever it was. Um, you know, he's got the yellow flag. I think he's supposed to play uh, tomorrow, but um, if they if they play tomorrow, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, where's Palace? Yeah, they play at the 11 o'clock games, so he should play tomorrow. Uh, given the yellow flag, although I'll still have to do a bit more, um, we may have to potentially uh, get rid. Um, if I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm just going to bring up a tab on the other side here, just in case. And we can potentially monitor that uh, elsewhere. Do -do -do -do. Let's see. Because it's kind of a inch, uh, an important talking point. Not really much going on from what I can tell. Mind you, if he doesn't play, I'll just close that. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much changed. Um, if he doesn't play, um, we'll see in our team that we can have we can have Kelly come in because we're going to be playing both our Leicester defenders this week. Ooh, speaking of which. Uh, got big goose eggs because they conceded four. Uh, so, yeah, not not great for them. Uh, Mane obviously getting an assist, uh, being slightly a part of the Trent Alexander-Arnold masterclass. Um, Jack Grealish, like we said, got an assist. Zaha uh, not returning. Uh, De Bruyne only getting an assist in the City game, uh, which was more than we were expecting, especially when City went down a card. Uh, Kane getting two bonus points and a goal for himself in the Spurs game. He was quite fortunate to get the goal, but he was also ruled out of a goal as well, which he was very marginally offside. And then Abraham and Vardy not returning. Uh, Abraham, I believe it's four returns in a row, and we kind of wish that he was uh, Jimenez because being a similar price point. He's also gone down as well, so we're kind of hoping that uh, he does something uh, against Arsenal. Otherwise, uh, even with some okay fixtures here, uh, we could potentially be looking at getting rid of him. Uh, so yeah, overall, it, 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 it felt like an average week, but it was a lot worse for us because the first time we're outside the um, top uh, top 100k uh, since game week nine, actually. So we've been inside top 100k for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine game weeks, and then it couldn't go double digits. But that's fine. So if we go to the fixtures for this week, bring over our little notepad. I haven't done the differentials because I'm I just got back, so I didn't have time to, to prep those. Um, so Brighton versus Bournemouth. Now I have to play Ramsdale this week because I definitely don't want to play Sheffield United goalkeeper against Man City. Um, even though the likelihood of them giving a clean sheet against Man City. I mean, who knows? Anything, anything's possible. But I'm playing the keeper with the better fixture because um, Brighton are not as good as Manchester City. Who would have thought? Um, so in this game, what do I think the result's going to be? I think Brighton will probably end up winning this game. Um, so I'm not, I'm not comfortable with putting Ramsdale in goal, but I'm not comfortable with Henderson putting him in goal. I can both see them getting low score, lower scores this week. Um, I just hope that Ramsdale gets some saves or maybe saves a penalty and they end up losing 2-1 anyway. But um, yeah, I think Brighton will probably win this game 2-1. Uh, Everton looked good. Uh, Newcastle uh, got obliterated by United, who typically wasn't able to break down teams, but they were giving us a lot of space, um, even so much so to get Aaron Wan-Bissaka his first assist. So I think Everton should be able to win this game comfortably. I'm actually going to go 2-0 uh, away win, which is quite difficult to do, especially at um, uh Newcastle's home ground. I think it's still called St. James Park. Maybe it's called the... Is it? I don't know. I think it, well, it used to be called St. James Park. I don't know if it's called the Sports Direct Arena or whatever it's called now. Southampton versus Crystal Palace. Uh, I feel like this game's got 1-1 written all over it. Um, you know, obviously, have to play one of my Palace defenders. Um, I just think Danny Ings is going to start. I think Danny Ings will score because these are the types of games where he plays against the middle to lower opposition and he does what he does best, which is score um so yeah I, I feel like it could be a could be a 1-1 if anything it'll probably be a Southampton win they are the home team 
It's probably favorite. Palace's form has kind of dropped off a bit. I just have to hope that if Van Aronholt does play, he at least goes 60 minutes and he gets me a return. Maybe he's the one that gets this one for his team. That'd be quite nice. Uh, Watford versus Aston Villa. Um, Aston Villa obviously much better at home. Obviously coming off a win uh, versus Norwich. Um, I don't know what to think in this one. I feel like Watford could win this game. Uh, but I also think that Aston Villa could also win. I'm going to probably sit on the fence with this one and probably go 1-1 in that as well. Norwich versus Spurs. I think Spurs should win this game. I think they should win it quite comfortably. Um, I'm going to go with a Spurs clean sheet as well as a 3-0 scoreline. West Ham versus Leicester. I think West Leicester will bounce back. I think it's going to be the same result. 3-0 to Leicester. Burnley versus Manchester United. Now... I know that Burnley are super annoying. Their home ground, Turf Moor, is a very annoying place to go, especially when the weather's crap. It's just—it's it's typically just one of these grounds that just looks like, you know, you're gonna show up on like a, it looks like a Sunday league pitch, like sometimes, like it just looks like the most miserable place to play. Like there's always those uh, those those sayings like you know you're not a true footballer until you've played on a mon a rainy Monday night in Stoke. Like, you know, and Burnley's like one of those stadiums where it just, like, it just looks miserable. Like, you just want to get in there, get the result, and get out. You know, not really fun to play at, or not really um, uh, one that you would see yourself, like, enjoying every week. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, that United, will, they obviously have to win this game. I'm going to predict the same score that I predicted uh, for the Newcastle game um, in 2-1. Uh, that's probably the most likely scoreline. Like I said, they don't keep clean sheets. They concede it to Newcastle. We'll probably concede to Burnley off some set piece, which we'll be kicking ourselves over. But again, it was a rarity that United scored four goals versus Newcastle. I don't think we're going to get the same amount of room as Burnley. Uh, Sean Dyche will have his team basically putting defense at the highest priority. Um, so yeah, I think that's the most likely scoreline. Arsenal versus Chelsea. Now, Arsenal usually has Chelsea's number. They obviously have Arteta coming in and uh, and being their new full-time manager. Uh, they did look quite good against Bournemouth, but again, Bournemouth isn't one of the teams in the hottest form at the moment. Um, and Chelsea obviously coming off a loss versus Southampton, but they did beat Spurs. So it could be an interesting game. This could be an anything scoreline, really, especially, um, you know, Arsenal is at home. Uh, Chelsea typically uh, doesn't do well versus Arsenal, but it is a completely different Chelsea team. And if there's anyone that knows uh, Arsenal and, and, and how they play or has played against uh, that style of team, um, you, you know, it would, it would be Lampard. And he would, he would know how to uh, basically figure out one of, one of the bigger teams uh, that are going to try to impose themselves on the game. Um, I think this is probably going to be a higher scoring draw. I'm going to go with a 2-2. Um, I think it could be even more than that because um, both teams uh, defensively haven't been quite up to standard. Uh, obviously, with uh, Arteta's first game, they looked better uh, in Arsenal, but um, it could be an interesting game. This could literally be anything from 0-0 to 5-5 like, and, and, in, and then a win in either way. So I'm going to go 2-2. I'm going to sit on the fence with it, um, and I just hope that Tammy Abraham gets the two goals for us because that would be quite nice, but uh, yeah. Liverpool versus Wolves. Wolves are obviously going to be coming off a high. Wolves were basically, from for the most part, in the first half. It was kind of pretty even until the red card happened. City did what City does, which is they could still score goals even with 10 men. Um, it seems like Wolves were only able to get um, their major chances in the last 10 minutes of the game. Uh, with 11 men, you could potentially say that City maybe closed out the game. Um so I think that Liverpool is going to be a bit more controlling in this game. Liverpool is also at home. So it's going to be uh, probably a more solid uh, solid game for Liverpool. I think it's going to be a pretty straightforward game. I'm going to go 3-1 uh, for Liverpool. Man City versus Sheffield United. Now this could be, a, again, a tricky fixture. Obviously, Man City don't have Bravo, so passing it. I mean, they don't have Ederson for this game. Uh, but presumably, he'd only, he's only going to be suspended for one game. Um... He wasn't anything malicious. He actually tried to pull out of the challenge um, as he was making it. I think that City uh, should be able to win this game. They are at home. Uh, Aguero got taken off after basically doing nothing. Um, Jesus is not injured. Aguero is just coming back from injury. So 
we'll have to we'll have to see but i think that city should have an, no problems with sheffield united um and being able to break them down city are, are the it, one of the best if not the best team at being able to crack a team shell um i think they're going to win this game i still think they're going to concede though i think they're going to go by the same scoreline as liverpool beat wolves in 3-1 which leads us to our players to watch out for clean sheets, differentials, however you want to call them. Um, I think the clean sheet this week uh, is going to go to Tottenham Hotspurs. Um, I don't think Norwich are going to be able to score against them. And Spurs' defense is, is, is improving uh, on, under Mourinho. Um, obviously, in the beginning, they were conceding goals. But they do have moments where they do lapse a bit. Um, but it seems to be tightening up ever so slightly. Um, you know, they did, did concede one in their last game, but again, I think in this game they should have no problem um, in doing that. Their problem will potentially be breaking the shell and getting that one. Because once Spurs get one, they can score four. Um, it, it's very, very much uh, very much like uh, Liverpool as well. Once Liverpool scores one, it can be four, just like in the Leicester game. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's quite scary, actually, in, in, in some games. Um, for goalkeeper... Um, I'm not actually too sure this week, to be honest. Um, I potentially, I'm, I might just pick, might pick Heaton again, potentially, um, for, for Aston Villa, because they do have a chance to potentially get a clean sheet versus Watford. Um, he does make a good bit of saves, um, and he's been playing, playing quite well, so... Potentially could go for Heaton again. Um, could also just naturally go for Pope uh, versus Man United. He seems to be the best goalkeeper on the, on the planet when he plays against us. So that could be a, a potential pick there. Um, could also uh, potentially go for, um, uh, for for Jordan Pickford for Everton. Potentially get a clean sheet versus Newcastle. And I think that's the one that we'll go for. We will go for Jordan Pickford of Everton because I think they'll get a clean sheet. Um, in defense, now Ancelotti said he's going to be rotating. Um, so whether that means midfield, whether that means uh, defense, he said it's very tough, obviously, to come to, to do a 48-hour turnaround. Um, potentially, the players that uh, worked harder, um, you know, may not be involved in today's in tomorrow's game, and it could be something to where as we see heavy rotation. Um, now, there's one thing that's been prevalent over the last um, uh, few game weeks, and that's been, um, you know, the, the defensive line. Like, Dinius basically played pretty much when he's, when he's fit. Um, he may be one, one to look out for. Uh, but I think the the new kid on the block, as it were, uh, Sidibe, who's an out-of-position player, um, he was playing at right, right wing or right mid, um, and he's a class as a defender. I think it's a good pick uh, for a one week, um, one week go. Um, and it could be could be quite good if at 5.3. Um, he's cheaper than Van Arnhold at the moment. He's cheaper uh, than the likes of Pereira and any of the six million plus defenders. You see, you know, it's it's a, but it's a, but it can be an awkward price point. But yeah, I think that's something to go for. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play because of the rotation factor. But I think. Given normal circumstances, he looked really good in the game. Uh, looked like he could provide a lot going forward. So, yeah, I think I'll stick with him. In midfield, this is actually a, quite a tricky one. Um, I was thinking of a few players um, from the earlier fixtures. So the likes of Pascal Gross could be quite good in the game versus Bournemouth, especially being at home. Um, I was thinking of potentially um, someone in, in the Watford midfield versus Aston Villa. Um... I just think you just have to go with something that's tried and tested. Um, I just think that somebody um, like Sadio Mane is somebody that you just can't underestimate um, at home. Um, he is so devastating at home um, and, and hasn't uh, hasn't had one of those ridiculous games. Like if we jump, I'm just going to move this over uh, really quickly and we're just going to take a look at Sadio Mane. So if we look at... Every his last his last couple of games, uh, he he didn't play in the Bournemouth game. Only got an assist in the last two games. Home to Everton, 15 points. Um, you know, then he had a home game against Brighton. Okay, he didn't do too hot, but it seems like every few games at home, he just does a monster score. Like 
He has a couple of scores in uh, away from home. So like Aston Villa was obviously a team that's newly promoted. Southampton was was just when they weren't uh, weren't great at the beginning of the season. But his like 15 points at Newcastle, 12 points at Leicester, uh, seven points is, is pretty good uh, versus uh, versus City, 15 points versus Everton. You know, it's, it seems like home he at home he's a pretty sure bet. Uh, he's actually only uh, from what I can tell. Blanked. He blanked in the opening game week where he didn't start. Um, he got subbed off uh, in the Arsenal game, although they won 3 1, so he could have easily potentially got points in that. Um, and then the only other one that he didn't get a any returns at all was Brighton at home. Uh, but everything else, he's gotten a return, and usually they're they're pretty pretty sizable in, in, in most cases. Um, now against Wolves, I don't know if they have they played Wolves? Uh, I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. But yeah, I think they could potentially he could potentially get a pretty, pretty sizable hole. So I think he is definitely one to look out for. Either him or Sala, one of the two. I'm just gonna put Mane there. But basically, they could be interchangeable at this point. They're both pretty much the same price, if not already the same price. I haven't checked Salah's price recently. Um, and if you don't have one of them going into a home game, it's probably quite worrying. Liverpool are gunning for the league. That's what they want. Um, so yeah, I think that's just something that they have to, that, that has to be considered. And then for up front, um, well, considering Aguero didn't play, uh, and, and Jesus is injured, you can almost guarantee that Sergio Aguero could be somebody that is pretty low owned. I mean, we can go and check that in a second. Um, and, and someone who's going to be fresh. I mean, he basically came on the field, stood around for, uh, like 10 minutes, got subbed off. So he's going to be fresh going into going into Sunday game versus Sheffield United. So you can look for him to get back in the action, look for him to re-cement his place in the lineup. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be the, uh, the the picks the picks for me. So just run it back again. So Brighton two one win over Bournemouth. Uh, Newcastle will lose uh, to Everton two uh, nil. Uh, it'll be one one draws for Southampton, Crystal Palace, and Watford and Aston Villa. 3-0 wins for Spurs and Leicester over Norwich and West Ham. A 2-1 win for Man United away at Burnley. Uh, a 2-2 uh, scoring affair in Arsenal and Chelsea in that derby. Uh, Liverpool and City will both pick up 3-1 wins uh, over Wolves and Sheffield United according to my predictions. So we'll move those over to the side. And just on, since we touched on it, I'm just going to go and check... Uh, Aguero right now. So Aguero is 11.7. He's 0.3 lower. He's only 10% owned. Um, if we look in the, the fixtures that he's played. So they're at home. So they played Chelsea. Aston Villa only played 14 minutes. Uh, you know, he, he's only had, he had the two monster holes in game three and four. Um, and then apart from that, hasn't done too much. So He's basically do one. He was injured for like a you know a good bit of time, uh, gaming's 14 through 17. So he's definitely a do a full 90 minutes to get in there, um, and he could potentially do that against Sheffield United too. Because City obviously going down a, a man basically didn't get to play uh, a proper game of football today. Now, if we look at how we have the team lining up, uh, we have Ramsdale and goal away to Brighton. Uh, We've chosen him over Henderson. Obviously, Henderson does have City away, and City will probably want to get revenge for losing to Wolves, uh, which just finished uh, uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, we have both the Leicester uh, defenders in at West Ham away. The only, excuse me, the only other potential option is obviously putting in Lundstrom or Kelly, but we want Van Arnhold over Kelly because of the attacking returns if Van Arnold doesn't play then Kelly will get subbed on in no problem we obviously have Dendonker ahead of Lundstrom just because Dendonker was likely to get points versus Lundstrom Lundstrom probably not gonna have a clean sheet um then we in the midfield pretty standard Sadio Mane, Zaha, Grealish, De Bruyne uh De Bruyne is a potential captaincy but I think we have to go with Kane obviously against the one of the lower ranked sides um, and then Vardy is the vice captain with Abraham 
as our third striker and he's going to basically be um, one of our players to look out for this week. Uh, people obviously getting rid of him, obviously not necessarily having a great fixture, but you know could potentially uh, fire back and get something uh, for his team this week. And I don't think there's much really chop and changing we really need to do. Um, we know that Kane's gonna gonna play. He's Mourinho's best friend, and Barney will play for Leicester every game. So those are two pretty safe bets uh, for the most part. Who um, De Bruyne could be rested, but I don't think he can be rested at this point because City need to win every game, and they're not doing that at the moment. So um, yeah, in terms of actual transfer action, uh, we have point one in the bank. Um, just gonna move that up so you can see it. Um, you know the, the the players that potentially have the, the the big money value is Kane, but Kane obviously has pretty good fixtures um, up until mid February. Uh, obviously, Liverpool at home isn't great, um, and obviously the City at home is great, but they are home fixtures. Um, but if you look at like the teams that they play from in in these game weeks, we have Norwich away is a newly uh, promoted team. Southampton away. Okay, Southampton were able to take down Chelsea, but again, are susceptible to goals. Liverpool at home. Okay, they're probably going to win the league. Watford away. Obviously, Watford's at the bottom of the table at the moment. Norwich at home. Again, the team that they're playing tomorrow or Sunday. Um, no, they play tomorrow. And then obviously Aston Villa. So yeah, and then after that, it kind of gets a bit, you know, a bit different. But uh, yeah, for the most part, these are kind of the games that we want to potentially have uh, our Spurs players in for um, and I think Kane's a, a great captaincy choice the thing that I'm looking for is the week in game week 24 where we have Liverpool having a double game week it has been confirmed West Ham also have a double game week however one of those are against Liverpool themselves and this run of fixtures to basically almost end the season for Liverpool is basically what we're looking at at nailing down the the players um, uh, for, for them the only thing that we don't want to do is obviously have Mane and Salah in um, when there's a potential where they're rotating them in and out and then every week you basically have 12 million plus just sitting there doing nothing now they do have the potential to come off the bench and get a goal um, or get an assist but uh, yeah you, you obviously this week it both of them will probably end up playing to potentially put the nail in the coffin because um, if they can get one up over Wolves when City just end up stumbling against them then uh, yeah could be quite good for them um, obviously the Tottenham away fixture isn't you know we, we discussed that that's not something that they could um, potentially drop um, or, or, or look to, to, to lose that they'll probably beat Spurs Spurs have been quite poor versus the top six teams um, Man United at home United has been the only team that has uh, been able to basically stunt Liverpool this season, dro them dropping two points to United in the first fixture. However, they're home this time, which is a completely different ball game. Um, so it could be potentially interesting there. And then obviously the Wolves away, West Ham away. We want to have two, uh, two plus Liverpool players in our team for that week for sure. Uh, looking at the likes of Salah, looking at the likes of Mane, potentially Firmino, uh, potentially Trent Alexander-Arnold um, and the rotation risk is quite low because um, I'm not sure if they actually play uh, a game on the weekend or if it's a cup game of some kind uh, but I know that, that you know it is a double game week and it is something that we can potentially look at and um, and expect uh, some type of uh, strong teams in both of these games because obviously they want to make sure that the league is long out of sight so even if there is any slip-ups uh, then they can basically control that but uh, yeah, if we had some hypothetical transfers, what could we do? Well, we can say, let's say, uh, Abraham has been underperforming, um, and then we can look to potentially, you know, upgrade someplace else. Uh, let's say, let's say, let's say, if Van Arnhold is long-term injured, we could potentially go to uh, the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold. Add him in there, um, and then for for forwards, we could potentially just get a dud, um, just a non-playing forward, 
Um, we could potentially get the likes of Jordan Ayo at five million, maybe. Um, you know, maybe uh, maybe Calvert Lewin if he's nailed on, uh, potentially for Everton. Uh, they have some decent fixtures. But again, I want to be able to do something like this with two transfers, so we kind of have to save it this week. Uh, we could potentially go back to uh, just having Mason Greenwood. Um, like I said, just have because he's not effectively a dud. He is playing some games now. He is coming off the bench pretty much every game. And um, we could potentially use that 1.8 elsewhere. Um, potentially upgrade Kane to Aguero. Um, could potentially upgrade... Um, uh, Kevin De Bruyne to a Salah if we feel that City's not performing as well um, you know it, it all depends it, it definitely all depends um, and we'd be basically be looking to change our formation to a a 4-4-2 in most weeks um, but in some cases a 3-4-3 three, three, um, if we feel that Greenwood is going to play or or we'll have a good uh, a good fixture in that um if we were to try to see if we can fit Salah into the team, it would probably be at the sacrifice of Harry Kane, most likely. Um, obviously, Kane still has like good fixtures. Let's say, you know, Spurs are just like, you know, after the walk for the, the Norwich game, we feel like we want to, um, or even we feel that the one Norwich game just isn't worth having the Spurs players and the Liverpool ones is better. Let's say we ax Kane. Um, we would then have to, uh, how much is Salah? I don't think you can get rid of Den Donker. Uh, Liverpool, where are we at? Mohamed Salah, there we go. Bring in Salah, uh, so restore. We would then have to get rid of, let's see. Let's say Grealish come to, let's say Grealish has got his, he got his yellow card in the Brighton game or something like that, or he got it in the in the Burnley game. We don't obviously want it for Man City because Man City most likely he. I mean, can he score against Man City? Yeah. Can he score against Brighton? Yeah, possibly. But if we wanted to make it early, we could just put in uh, Mohamed Salah, and then again we can go with the potential Jordan Ayew or the non-playing forward, um, and then play uh, still play four in midfield. It'll depends. Um, also, at that point, we'll have our wild card too, so we can potentially mix things up and just change the whole thing. So uh, yeah, potentially uh, quite uh, quite an interesting change of events. But yeah, this is the team that we're going to be going with. We're going to have Kane captain again. He didn't let us down last time. We're going to believe in him again. Him and Barty are the most two likely candidates to start this week. Um, the people are saying that potentially Liverpool players could be rested. Um, it's possible, but uh, yeah, that's the team we're going to go with this week. Let us know what you think in the comments below when this video goes up on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, make sure to follow the stream and subscribe to us over on, on YouTube. All the links are in down the Twitch description below as well as on the YouTube descriptions below. I'm Pilot Flame, and I hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and Boxing Day. More football action uh, tomorrow in the games and we hope to have a much better week than we have the last two weeks we like to get back up into the top 100k because it feels good up there um so yeah wherever you are in the world have a good day have a good night and i'll see you just before new year's take care